It's not uncommon in a government investigation to feel such a state of shock and awe. Justin Paperni versus the United States of America was something I never envisioned. As articulated through our work, we have said I could have imagined getting the rarest disease before I would ever see my name in a federal indictment. And because I was so unprepared, forget about me, because so many defendants are unprepared for that United States of America versus their name, they don't know how to respond when forced, when faced with struggle. So all of them want the same thing. They don't want to go to prison. And the tragic irony is they end up making decisions that exacerbate their problems, that actually lead to a longer prison term. And a simple Google search will paint you, will show you scores of examples of people who potentially could have avoided prison, who could have gotten released from prison early, and in so doing, because of their bad choices, got longer prison terms, got sent to higher security prisons. I'll point to some examples. Recently, someone reached out to our team to, to mention that their husband uh, was in prison, serving four years for a tax crime in a minimum security camp. Ran out of phone minutes, uh, decided that it would be in his interest. He had to call home. Something was, he couldn't, couldn't resist temptation. I think it was, uh, it was Oscar Wilde who said he could resist anything but temptation. Uh, used a cell phone, got caught, and used it repeatedly. Now he's, he's in the SHU, special housing unit. He's in a higher security prison was in the drug program, gonna lose that. Disastrous consequences that accompanied making really bad choices, making matters worse. So whether it's in prison, understanding your environment, or you've just been indicted, overcoming, the, managing this, this crisis, uh, so to speak. What does it start with? Somehow, some way, you're gonna to have to speak openly and honestly to people that, that you retain. Too many defendants, including me, align themselves with yes people who tell you what you want to hear or they just don't tell people the truth and they're not really in a position to, to not believe you because they love you, they support you. Why would you lie to them? They're your friends and family. In my specific case, I lied to the government when they interviewed me. In fact, in a few days, I'm going to interview Paul Bertrand, the now retired FBI agent who retired, who, who is now retired. He's the one that indicted me. He's the one that arrested me and showed up at my home. We're now friends. And in this interview, you'll hear him say, had I responded truthfully when interviewed, my whole life would have been different, including not getting prosecuted. So the, the takeaway for this video is you're already going through enough struggle. You're already dealing with the shock and awe of a government investigation, of the fallout that accompanies the the unlimited resources the government has, of a prosecutor looking to advance his career on, on your case, and a Department of Justice press release unit writing reports and releases that I know make you sick, as they made my family and me sick. The point is, you've got to stop the bleeding. You've got to ensure that you do not make matters worse. Lying to the government, lying to your lawyers, not fully understanding the motivations behind your choices if you broke the law, not investing the time through your own efforts to demonstrate why you're worthy of leniency, not creating accountability logs. In other words, if your goal at sentencing is to pay back X amount of money, you should be working and setting aside that money, and you can show that to the government your plan. I know of some defendants who have been able to get shorter sentences because of that payment plan. If you're a year out from sentencing, it's incumbent that you're looking for work or documenting why you're working. What's another problem in the criminal justice system? Some people won't look for work, or they think that some work may be beneath them. If you're a doctor, or a lawyer, or an accountant, or a businessman, or a salesman, you're used to a certain level of income, prestige that accompanies that job, and if you've been fired, it may be more humbling or hard to start over. Yet, every day that you can work helps establish a record as a law-abiding citizen. You're paying taxes. So, as I close, if you are in the beginning of a government investigation, your job is very simple. Beyond, besides the obvious of working openly and honestly with counsel, ensure that you are not making matters worth with respect to drinking, drug use, lying to your lawyers, issues at home, cr continued criminal conduct. There are people who are you know, under government investigation continue to, to break the law. Stop making matters worse. And the same thing holds true for prison because I can tell you when that nice woman called to tell me that her husband serving four years for a tax fraud was in the hole now going to a higher security prison, who is it harder on? It's harder on those that love and support him, his wife. He's a grandfather, actually. His children, his grandchildren. What I need you to think about, stop making matters worse. If you find value, please like, subscribe, and comment. I'll return soon uh, with more content to help guide you through this system. Thank you so much.